Hello, I'm James and welcome to another edition of Executive Corner Expert Talks. As an intense rain event continues to pummel the east coast of Australia, more and more regions are being impacted by flooding. One of the worst affected areas in New South Wales is the Hawkesbury region and to discuss the current concerns affecting the area, State MP Robin Preston joins me. Robin, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, James. Well, first and foremost, can you take us through the exact impact that we are seeing throughout your region? Well, look, it's quite devastating. We have uh, a massive uh, flood that we've experienced even greater than March last year. So it has actually peaked today, but the water will settle. And we're looking at millions and millions of dollars of infrastructure that has to be rebuilt. Uh, we've got uh, turf farms in that area that have only taken the last 12 months to get back on their feet market gardeners. This impacts a huge area of Sydney. Um, Hawkesbury is the food bowl for all of Sydney. So you won't be seeing uh, a lot of fresh produce coming from our area. We don't have that capacity now. Well, let's talk a little bit more about the actual agriculture impacts. Obviously, there's a lot of that fresh food. There's also uh, livestock as well that are in the regions. Do you have some sort of understanding as to how much in the way of uh, livestock and also fresh food is supplied by the Hawkesbury region to sort of greater New South Wales and also Australia. Is it a significant portion? Oh, absolutely. And it's probably one of the closest locations to provide stock and uh, food to Sydney. Um, you know, you, you have trucks moving in and out with that sort of goods on a daily basis. Uh, you know, and the, the problem is, um, we have a, a council that has a $35 million infrastructure backlog of repairs from 12 months ago that they still haven't completed. So something that stands out for me is for us to get people up and back on their feet, for homes to be restored, for businesses, for farm and produce to be restored, we really need more than just local government to take charge of this. I'm recommending that the state government come in as an overarching um, support and manage a lot of these bigger infrastructure projects that have just collapsed. Bridges, roads, uh, the rail, it's all fallen apart and been washed away. It's interesting you mentioned there the local council. Obviously, you're at the state level of politics and, and there is also federal, which has been looking to provide assistance in places like Lismore and, of course, Hawkesbury as well. And it, it is important to acknowledge here it isn't just a purely state issue. It does take working with local council and also support from the federal government. But what, what possible strategies could be implemented moving forward to mitigate the impact of flooding in the region in the years that come? Well, you've got to look at flood mitigation um, and one of the biggest factors is Warragamba Dam, which is a holding a catchment dam. Uh, and this government's been recommending uh, raising the dam wall for 14 metres. That actually will catch the rain and hold that back. And what it does, it offers some protection for 70,000 people that are living below that Warragamba Dam area. Um, you know, these are people that have settled in the area since the very early days of, of settlement in Sydney. And so it really looks at protecting all the farms, uh, the infrastructure, roads, hospitals, schools, people's homes. Um, and, and also we've got some really old historic homes around Windsor and Richmond, uh, right throughout Hawkesbury, Ebenezer. Uh, one of the oldest churches in, in Australia is in Ebenezer. So protecting those assets when they're near the water, and let's face it, they built them near the water years ago because it was convenient to have that access. Uh, I think we need to look at uh, the Insurance Council and talk to them about a policy that covers people in flood zones that they can afford. Premiums at the moment to cover their houses are around $20,000 a year. Mm. Now, most of them can't afford that. Well, obviously those are future plans, but in terms of right now, we've seen some criticisms coming out against the federal government, for example, with their work or lack thereof up in Lismore. But have you been receiving much in the way of support from state or federal governments for the Hawkesbury? Yes, we've got 56 fire trucks ready to go in Hawkesbury once the water uh, uh, subsides. That's probably not until well, late Friday and then Saturday. Uh, I've got um, on the ground police, ADF and SES and Rural Fire Service volunteers. They're ready to go. I'll probably see them move in fr by Friday uh, when the water's come down a little bit. What we've got to do is check the... Um, safety of the roads and access for our people when they want to get back into those flood affected areas as well. But uh, skip bins will be available. Uh, we're working with local council uh, for people to register. Uh, we have 
community hubs that are being set up, they're recovery hubs. One's going to be at South Windsor, and that's at the South Windsor Family Centre in Green Hills Way. And then we'll put another one in at Wiseman's Ferry as well. And if we need more in other parts of Hawkesbury, we will provide those. So they'll be operational, one in South Windsor from Saturday at 10 a.m. And we'll have uh, resources there from uh, Services New South Wales, uh, Housing and Resilience New South Wales, and they'll be plugged into other government agencies that can help them and support them in recovering through this tragedy. Now I understand there's also some shelters set up around Castle Hill, is that correct? Yes, look, I was down there yesterday. We had to evacuate residents from McGrath's Hill and Mulgrave. And so we couldn't take them back up into Richmond. We had to move them away from the floodplain. So Castle Hill RSL was an evacuation point, but we only had around about uh, less than a dozen families that went there. What I'm finding this year, uh, James, with this flood compared to 12 months ago is people have made contingency plans. For example, uh, Caravan Park at South Maruta, they actually moved 50 boats and 120 caravans before the flood came and devastated their entire area. So uh, people were moving their furniture into crates and into storage vans and taking them away before the floods came. Uh, we've got um, helping hands, packing hampers and working with the SES and flying them out by chopper to far remote areas out at St Albans and Lower Macdonald. Uh, there's a whole team of community and resources coming together from volunteers to SESs to all the emergency services groups and the police, all coming together in Hawkesbury. I don't see that in other areas of New South Wales. Mm. I think we're very fortunate here. Uh, it's a wonderful sense of community about the region, that's for sure. And you, you've talked a lot there about the different, uh, different factors, whether it be the SES or the police assisting. Uh, we know there's also shelters that are set up, but in terms of what else is happening outside of the human impact, we do know that a lot of roads are cut off. There's also some issues with the transit lines. Uh, can you shed a bit more light on exactly what the impacts are in that respect? Well, look, the Richmond line, the train line, hasn't been running um, because of the floods. And, and in fact, um, David Elliott, the Minister for Transport, is out at South Windsor uh, looking at the train line this afternoon as we speak. So uh, our ministers like to get out there firsthand and just see what the problems are on the ground. We hope to get that up and running as quickly as possible because some of the roads are blocked as well still. And you really have to take care. South Windsor has been shocked by the flooding there in the last 24 hours and some people are isolated but we're getting supplies to them. Well Robin it is quite an extreme situation is there any final thoughts you'd like to share with our viewers and the uh, the people in Hawkesbury? I think look uh, as, a, as a community we're working very hard uh, to get back on our feet but look this is a 12 month process they were just back on their feet when this has come again uh, we are a resilient community. Uh, we look after our mates, we look after our neighbours, and, and that's something that's shown through for me. Well, Robin, thank you so much for your time today, and best of luck with the cleanup, and of course, making sure that as much damage is uh, minimised as humanly possible. Thank you. Well, that's Robin Preston, the State Member of Parliament for the Hawkesbury, and at Calkine, our thoughts do go out to all of those people who are affected by flooding. And of course, if you do need assistance, your first point of call should be the SES on 132 500. If you did miss any part of that chat, simply head across to our YouTube channel, Calkine Media, and make sure to subscribe. I'm James Preston, signing off for Calkine.